Good morning and welcome to worship at St. Barnabas. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. If you're joining us on Facebook Live, go ahead and put a comment in the comment section of Facebook Live, letting us know where you're worshiping from. Our opening hymn is on page four of your service bulletin or on your screen. Please stand as you're able for the cross. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Dios omnipotente, para quien todos los corazones están manifiestos, todos los deseos conocidos sin ningún secreto, un cubierto, purificar los pensamientos de nuestros corazones con la inspiración de tu Santo Espíritu, para que perfectamente te en uh, te animos y dignamente celebremos tu santo nombre. Por Cristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people, thus says the Lord. The people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built. O vir virgin Israel, again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the, hot, in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion to the Lord our God. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. No. <laughs> A reading from Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. The Lord, he is the Lord of all. This message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. 
Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Fill this place, and fill our homes, and fill our hearts. Amen. Amen. Once upon a time, there lived a sea lion who had lost the sea. He lived in a country known as the Barren Lands, high on a plateau, far from any coast, it was a place so dry and dusty that it could be only be called a desert. A kind of coarse grass grew in patches here and there, and a few trees were scattered across the horizon. But mostly it was dust, and sometimes wind, which together with the dust makes one very thirsty. And of course, it must seem strange to you so that such a beautiful creature should wind up in a desert at all. He was, mind you, a sea lion. But things like this do happen. How the sea lion came to the barren land, no one can remember. It all seemed so very long ago. So long, in fact, that it appeared as though he had always been there. Not that he belonged in such an arid place. How could that be? He was, after all, a sea lion. But as you know, once you've lived so long in a certain spot, no matter how odd, you come to think of it as home. Part of our human condition is that we are like the sea lion. Every one of us leads lives that are not as grand as they could be. We live small. We have covered over the immortal diamond that is inside each one of us. We have even forgotten that we were made in the image of God and that we could be much, much more. We have forgotten that Christ is in all and around all. For many of us, we're even uncomfortable being reminded that our lives fall short. After all, we're working very hard. We are doing as much as we can. We have grown to like the life we have. After all, we do live on the central coast. <laughs> and how dare we be reminded that our children and grandchildren are like the sea lion in the desert. Our children and grandchildren are perfect. They're pure. They're beautiful. Our grandson Carter isn't like a sea lion yet, is he? Not yet. There was a time many years back when the sea lion knew he was lost. In those days, he would stop every traveler that he met to see if they might help him find his way back to the sea. But no one seemed to know the way. On he searched, but never finding. After years without success, the lion, the sea lion took refuge but beneath a solitary tree beside a very small waterhole. 
the tree provided refuge from the burning rays of the sun, which could be very fierce in that place. And the water hole, though it was small and muddy, was wet in its own way. Here he settled down and got on as best he could. Many of us fill our not lives with noise. We focus on career, we focus on money, we focus on having as much control as we can so that others are powerless over us. However, e even when we create noise in our lives, we still know that there's something more. We still have a longing and a desire for something that is bigger and brighter. Brother Lawrence is a 17th century Carmel Carmelite monk who wrote about the liminal moments we have in the everyday parts of life. Liminal moments are those larger than life moments in which you feel and experience the presence of God. Of course, the most liminal moment in history was the birth and life of Jesus as God crossed the boundary to become human. Psychologists call liminal space a place where boundaries dissolve. It is when we stand there on the threshold, getting ourselves ready to move across the limits of what we were into what we will be. It is when we have a glimpse of eternity. For me, these liminal moments can be triggered by the sound of music or brought on by the sight of a sleeping baby or loved one. We each have these liminal moments and Brother Lawrence centered his life on these experiences. In his book, Practicing the Presence of God, Brother Lawrence wrote about his effort to expand the frequency of these moments and the duration of these moments. Brother Lawrence tried to live his everyday life in a liminal space where he was continuously experiencing the presence of God. One of the theories that we have about Easter is that the resurrection of Jesus does something to this threshold that we have between this world and the next. The life, death, and resurrection of Jesus changed the universe forever. 2,000 years ago, when Jesus came back to life, it dissolved the barrier between us and God, facilitating the moments we stand in the threshold and experience the liminal. We each have experienced that desire for the liminal, for something more, and I'm convinced that part of our human nature is the desire to be deeply connected to God, others, and self. We were created by God to be in relationship. Spirituality is all about relationships. Spirituality is about healthy, loving relationships with God, other, self, and the rest of non-human creation. And as I said, we each have an innate desire to be connected. Desire is a word that we often associate with earthier things. We desire food, we desire a big house, we desire or lust after things. And yes, that is one form of desire, but we are also much more for we are desire. It is the essence of our human soul, the secret of our existence. Absolutely nothing of human greatness is ever accomplished without desire. Not a symphony has been written, a mountain climbed, an injustice fought, or a love sustained apart from desire. Desire fuels our search for the life we prize. Our desire, if we will listen to it, will sa save us from the sacrifice of our hearts on the altar of getting by. The same old thing is not enough. It never will be. Now, I know that things get in the way of our desires. Each and every one of us here today struggles to answer the call of our desire. 
That is one of the beauties of walking through life with others. That's why we do church. We can help one another and we can learn from one another. Together, we can worship God and we can practice our spirituality so that we can recognize and be aware of God's eternal and unchanging love. There is nothing you can do to increase God's love for you and there is nothing you can do to decrease God's love for you. God just loves and loves and loves. Henry Nouwen once asked Mother Teresa for spiritual direction. Spend one hour each day in adoration of Jesus, she said, and never do anything that you know is wrong. Follow this and you'll be fine. Such simple yet profound advice. For you see, worship is the act of the abandoned heart adoring its God. And it is, worship is, the union that we crave. Few of us ever experience anything like this on a regular basis, let alone one hour each day. But it's what we desperately need. Simply showing up on Sunday is not even close to this type of worship. Neither does singing songs with a religious content pass for this type of worship. What counts is the posture of the soul involved. The open heart pouring forth its love towards God and communing with Jesus. It is a question of desire. Now one day the sea lion had a dream. There were other nights in which he had dreamed of the sea, but those were long ago and nearly forgotten. Even still, the ocean that filled his dreams this night was so beautiful and clear, so vast and deep, it was as if he were seeing it for the first time. The sunlight glittered on its surface, and as he dived, the waters all around him shone like an emerald if he, swam quite, excuse me, if he swam quite deep, it turned to jade, cool and dark and mysterious. But he was never frightened, no, not at all. For I must tell you that in his dreams of the sea, he had never before found himself in the company of other sea lions. This night, though, there were many round about him, diving and turning, spinning and twirling. They were playing. Oh, how he hated to wake up from that wonderful dream. The tears running down his face were the first wet thing that he had felt in a while. But he did not pause even to wipe them away. He did not pause, in fact, for anything at all. He set his face to the west, and he began to walk as a sea lion can. Where are you going, he was asked. I'm going to find the sea. On this Easter Sunday, I invite you on a lifelong journey of desire as we walk together in our quest towards Jesus. As comfortable or familiar as it might be, know that the desert is not your home. Your home is in the sea that we know of as the kingdom of God on earth. And know this as well, God already desires you. Happy Easter. He is risen. Please stand as you're able, and let us say together the affirmation of our Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God.
At this time, if you are joining us on Facebook Live, please put your own thanksgivings and intercessions in the comment section. And now let us pray for the church and for the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let thy perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. In our own community, we pray for Dan and Carl, Marcia, Robert Rayner, Marcy, Katie, Barbara, Leslie Campbell, Mike Stahl, Steve Clifton, Kathy and Josh, Hillary, Carol Hillicus, Paul Tatella, Dennis, Pamela Jones, Julie, and Courtney. And we pray for the repose of soul for Brad Rayner, Annette Spark, Matt Hennepin, those who are in the Tennessee school From the bidding book, we pray for healing for Kevin Baker. We pray for Tony McNeil, for the repose of soul for Gisette Silvestri. We pray for Desiree Silvestri and family. The repose of soul for Mike Budd. Comfort and peace for Carolyn, Bud, and family. Repose of soul for Jacob. Comfort for Heidi, Laura, and Jeff Hart. Comfort for Philip, Kyle, and Neil. Healing for Leslie Campbell. Healing for Pamela Jones, and for Stan Martin, and for Jim. Thanksgiving for answered prayers. And from those at home. From Facebook Live, we have prayers for Pat to ease and speed the transition to Santa Maria. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, 
that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share peace with one another. Peace. And if you're on Facebook Live, go ahead and put the word peace or some other appropriate word into the comment section of Facebook Live. And if you're on Facebook Live and you have a birthday or anniversary or other celebration, put that in the comment section as well. Peace. Please be seated for the announcements. On page 21, we have a couple things going on in our community. We're starting a new Bible study topic, not this coming Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. We've been studying the book of Romans, and we're moving now into a topical study um, around the Lord's Prayer. So I invite you to join either in person in the library or on Zoom, 9.30 Tuesday morning for morning prayer and 10 o'clock for an hour of Bible study. Also there on page 21, you'll see information about the Spring Renewal, which is a diocesan event up in Salinas on April, Friday, April 28th and Saturday the 29th. I invite you to go up to Salinas. You'll need to register ahead of time and buy a ticket for that, but it will be a good event. We have some birthdays and anniversaries that are already listed there on page 12. Um, Matt, Judy Burdick, Georgiana Gleason, who I saw here this morning, um, and then Melissa. Is it your birthday, Melissa? Oh, another Melissa. Um, and then we have anniversaries, Janice and Peter Ryan and John and Judy Pence. Any other celebrations today? Yes, Jim. Happy birthday to all of you. Your family's busy this time of year. Yes, Pamela? Good, and I think we're, uh, Kathy, we're remembering Jeremy died a year ago yesterday, is that correct? So we'll remember the Reverend Jeremy Bond as well. Other celebrations? Any on Facebook Live, Adam? None. Why don't we say the birth, oh yes, Bill? Today is the 20th birthday of one of my granddaughters, Annabella Long. And she had, was pretty sick when she was originally born, I hear, so glad she's 20 years old now. We have a birthday prayer and an anniversary prayer there on page 12. We'll say these two prayers together. Is there another one? Yes, Judy. We will say the travel prayer then as well. We have three prayers we'll say, starting with the birthday prayer on page 12, praying together. Gracious God, who made us in your own image, we thank you for life, love, and joy. Send your blessing upon these, your children, who have completed another year. Surround them with your grace, fill them with your love, and strengthen them to be your servants in the world. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the anniversary prayer. We thank you, gracious God, for the love you have implanted in the hearts of your servants and for your continued blessings upon them. Give them kind and loving hearts, always ready to ask forgiveness as well as to forgive. Support them through times of trial. Strengthen their love for one another. And may that love empower them to be instruments of God's love in the world. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the prayer for all those traveling. O God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation, and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your love, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Congratulations to all who are celebrating. And before we go to an offering, I see the kids are here.
If you stand up here with a cross and face that way, you'll have a picture taken. <laughs> and pause there for a moment for a picture. I think the picture was taken. You can put the cross in front of the altar now. Good. I invite you to come up and see it afterwards. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
prayer A is found on page 14 of your service bulletin. Or on your screen. The Lord be with you. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, 
we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. for the people of God. All are welcomed at God's table. All are welcomed at God's table here at St. Barnabas. No matter where you are in your spiritual journey, you are welcome to participate in the bread and the wine. In addition, it's not an open invitation if I don't also say, if you don't want to participate, then that's okay as well. One other thing on logistics, the ushers will be releasing you from the back to come forward. You'll get a piece of bread um, from one of the two bread stations, and then you'll go over to the side and get a small indi individual bowl of wine, drink the wine and put it into the dish bowl over on the side, and then return back to your pew then as well. The choir will actually probably go first before the ushers start releasing.
is on page 19 of your service bulletin. Please stand as you're able. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Children, please meet in the courtyard when the service is finished. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.